Hello everyone, Darren here, and on today's episode of Watch the Academy, we're going to look at how to play the Tier 9 Italian medium tank, the Standard B. This tank is essentially the Italian's attempt at the Euro Panzer project, and is also not recommended for inexperienced players due to the auto-reloading mechanism. But if you are dead set on getting the Tier 10, this video is for you. So let's get started. Starting with the armor on the standard B, the armor is pretty much non-existent. The armor is much like the Leopard prototype in the sense that almost nothing will bounce and anything that does bounce will be more than likely considered a miracle. Therefore you should not rely on the armor. While the standard B may appear to have more armor than the Leopard prototype, in reality this slight difference really does mean nothing as Again, the armor will not be able to withstand very high caliber guns, or guns at 9 and 10. And as always, this lack of armor makes you a juicy target for artillery or those with big HE guns. So, essentially the doctrine is, mobility is armor with this vehicle. Now, in terms of mobility, the Standard B is a pretty speedy tank, with a forward speed of 65 km per hour and a reverse speed of 23 km per hour, you should be able to reach wherever you're going with no trouble at all, and be able to reverse and escape quickly if you need to. As for the fire chance, it's at 10%, so you could potentially forgo running a fire extinguisher if you choose to do so. Now, in terms of firepower, the Standard B is a pretty respectable 105mm top gun. This gun has a clip of 3, a base accuracy of .35, which can be boosted with a commander that has uh, necessary skills, and it has a re and it has a base reloads. And remember, the first clip is the last clip. The first round will be the last round that you fire. So just keep that in mind. But these base reloads are 20.7 seconds, 17.7 seconds, and 15.7 seconds. And it will have a base aim time of 2.5 seconds. This means you'll have no problem getting your shots on target, but the reloads will be your crutch. The elevation and depression angles are pretty good for a NATO style medium with 10 degrees of depression and 20 degrees of elevation. This means you should have no problem fighting in and around ridgelines and hills. But remember, this vehicle has an auto-reloading mechanism. This means you should not treat it like a single shot or an auto-loader, but rather both at the same time. Now, how do you set up the standard B? Well, in terms of consumables, I run 33 APDS, which is basically APCR, 20 heat, and zero hash because of the long reloads of the auto reloading mechanism. And I also run a repair kit, a first aid kit, and a fire extinguisher because, of course, my luck with artillery. But you can drop the fire extinguisher for food or gas if you wish to use either of those. For equipment, I run an advanced loader, a gun stabilizer, and improved ventilation to improve the overall performance of the tank, because I find it more beneficial to try and improve the stats of the auto-reloading mechanism and the gun as good as I can. Of course, if you believe vision is a priority in this vehicle, you can swap improved ventilation for advanced optics if you wish to do so. Now for the commander setup, I recommend the medium commander setup that I list in my commander's vid as a starting point for this vehicle. A link to the setup video will be in the description. I choose this setup because it frankly is the ideal setup for this style of vehicle, but for the sake of ease of information, the skills are in no particular order. Born leader, rapid reloading, steady aim, snapshot, run and gun, Sixth Sense, Track Mechanic, Marked Target, Situational Awareness. Of course, feel free to modify the commander to suit your playstyle or needs. Now, how do you play the Standard B? Well, like I mentioned in the How to Play video covering the Progetto 65, this vehicle is a very difficult tank to master. And again, I must stress, 
the auto reloading mechanism or frankly the Italian line is not for the inexperienced players. You need to treat it like a combination of both an auto loader and a single shot tank. While the vehicle is capable of being played like one or the other, it is not the way to bring out the full potential of the tank by treating it like one or the other. With armor being effectively non-existent, you want to use the standard B as a second line support tank and or a flanker, getting around behind enemies and dealing damage to them before quickly disappearing to reload your one or two or maybe even three shots. Aggressive play is possible, but it is best to remember that mobility is your armor. And again, lastly, I must strongly emphasize that this line is not for inexperienced players. That concludes the general overview of the vehicle and how to set it up and play. Let's take a look at some gameplay. Now, I'm sure many of you probably remember seeing this video already. If this, you know, if you come off as thinking, hmm, this is very familiar to you. Well, it is, and that is because that this was part of the map awareness. But again, I had such a very, very good game, and this was, this game was a fantastic demonstration of the capabilities of this vehicle that I simply could not you know, overlook the fact that this is perfect for a how to play video on the standard B. So we are on the uh, Sand River, if I remember correctly how this name is. For some reason, I just stopped caring about names at this point. But this is um, Norse Spawn. It is the encounter game mode. And right away, I use my mobility to quickly get into the riverbed to at least try and get some cross shots on anyone trying to make a move for any particular direction. And as you can see, I'm doing a fairly good job at getting some da spot assist, doing some damage myself, and overall also spotting for my team. The one issue though is as you can see, lack of armor, and I frankly was tunnel visioned and more focused on trying to eliminate a tank and gain at least some minor advantage and I paid for that dearly by pretty much losing half my health. I also would like to point out that um, I technically do not have this vehicle fully upgraded, and this was an intentional choice. The vehicle is fully upgraded in the sense that, of course, I have the tier 10, but I chose the lower, the the starting turret simply because of aesthetic design choice, really. And at the cost of that, I have less HP and turret rotation. But as you can see, even with not having fully upgraded, I'm able to still, you know, be a threat on the battlefield. Now, with this whole thing here, I decided, all right, I'm going to use my mobility and the gun depression and the gun pretty much. And this is where I like to play in my mediums, to be honest. I like being on this hill. I can get some good spotting for my team. I'm also able to use my gun depression to hide my weak spots. And overall here, now I'm kind of in a position where I am really a liability. And also a complete failure at trying to drive over rocks. <laughs> um, as you can see, visibly frustrated that I did that as I figured my game was over at that point. But as realizing the situation that we could be pushed substantially if we didn't have the rear support that we needed, I decided to get out, thus I ended up getting stuck. Thankfully, the team managed to handle the situation while I was in my predicament, and I decided to swing back around, and upon noticing that the enemy was pushing north towards our spawn, I decided to roll up into, I, unintentionally, the cap and try to get some cross shots. Didn't work out as well as I had hoped, but thankfully a tier 8 TD or medium tank was exposed on the right hand side and I managed to uh, put a shot into that vehicle as well. Noticing that I have gained the uh, uninvited attention of a vehicle or two, I decided to back off the ridge, reload, get that last round, and this is kind of one of these situations where you have to dictate, yeah, I've got two more rounds, but is it worth the long reload? And that's, so, again, something I'm still learning. You cannot master this. This is like something upon like hours and hours and hours of playing with this mechanic. And 
even someone like me who has kind of done that still cannot master it. It is, it is one of those that just you simply have to learn through your own judgment and experience in order to decide if it's worth firing one shot, two shots, or all three. So at, at this point in time, I'm firing when I can. If I can dispatch a vehicle with two shots, I'll fire two shots. If I can do it with one shot, I will. I prefer not to fire all three because that leaves me as a liability to my team and vulnerable, but sometimes it's absolutely necessary. And I believe the vehicle I'm shooting at right now is one of those. Thankfully, though, a teammate manages to take care of that, and I decide that I'm going to take care of that VK by putting another shot in. This is another one of those situations where, okay, I got a one-shot vehicle in front of me. I got one round to spare. I'm going to make that shot. Fortunately now, I am kind of a little bit in a uh, risky situation as I am now completely reloading. We'll only have one round, and this guy has more health than me. So I'm going to try and keep him spotted, hoping that the TDs will um, be able to just kind of drop down on top of him and do, you know, take care of him. And also at least try and keep his head on a swivel and unsure of what to do, allowing me to reload. Now seeing that I'm almost fully reloaded and that I can probably clip him out here, I decide to make the push on him seeing as he's running. I put a nice good snapshot into the rear of him, and I'm going to continue the pursuit as I feel that I will probably have this round loaded by the time he either sweeps around to try and put a shot in retaliation or... Um, so be it. As you can see here, he pokes out again, makes a mistake, I pen him, and knowing that the turret armor of the Italians are not that good at all, I dispatch him with a full clip, if even one extra round. At this point, we are in the cleanup operation, and it's, at this point, yeah, it's, it's a very, very good game. Um... Again, really not much to wholly talk about as usual at the end of these games. It's just at this point, you're cleaning up. You, uh, I do kind of, it's easier to manage your rounds at late in the game because you're driving around a lot that you're able to safely, for the most part, reload in its entirety. Um, more risky at the beginning of games, but, you know, at, it's easier to play these vehicles at near the end. Managed to put one shot into the uh, defender, put a second shot into the defender, taking him out. Now hoping that I can reload another round before um, I have to shoot this vehicle. I do so. I poke out, realizing he's a one shot. I just put the last round in, ending the game. And as you can see here, I do a solid over 5,000 damage raw with a all right amount of assisted damage. Thus, also granting me the mastery badge and i believe also unfortunately i can't tell with the uh horrible quality that i get with recording audio at the moment i do manage to secure eight kills not a bad game and that concludes today's video on how to play the standard b i'd like to thank you all for watching if you enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up and if you want to see more don't forget to hit that subscribe button but until next time, this has been Darren of Watsi Academy.